Hello, I'm Clara Pezuela. I'm Innovation Hub Manager at Research and Innovation in Atos. I'm member of the Technical Steering Committee of Fiber, and I'm responsible for all the fiber related activities in my department. Today, I'm here with my colleague Roberto Castillo to present you how we in Atos are integrating LoRa technologies in our IoT platform based on fiber. Concretely, how we are using the last The Things Network server version working with our solution. Before going into technical details about the integration that will be provided by my colleague just uh, afterwards, I will give you a brief introduction about what Fiber is. Fiber is about context. In our digital life, Everything is gravitating around the context information, but not only the raw data is important, but also the context where this data is produced. So the context information describes not only what is going on, but also where, when and why. Thus, Fiber becomes a best technology for managing this context information since it is providing an open and standard set of components that are able to manage this heterogeneity. It's based on NGSI, which is a standard that stands for the Next Generation Service Interface, and although it's a horizontal technology, is widely used in some vertical domains like smart cities, agri-food, industry 4.0, and so on. The fiber technology is supported by the Fiber Foundation, which currently has more than 300 members around the world. Atos, my company, is one of the original founders of the foundation and currently Platinum member, with roles in the Board of Directors and Technical Stream Committee. Why should you choose Fiber as your base technology for context information applications? First of all, because it's open in alternative to existing proprietary platforms. Second, because of modularity, you can just pick up the module that is needed for you. It's interoperable, so it's supporting a set of APIs based on standards that allow you to manage this context information. It's non-intrusive because you can smoothly integrate with existing systems that you have. And you avoid the vendor locking so you can port easily your solution across different platform providers that were using the same standard and firmware. If we have a look at the high level architecture that uh, could be used uh, in firmware, you can integrate devices from many types, but not only devices, but also any kind of data source that uh, was coming from different uh, systems. And you can use the IoT agents in order to convert this data, these different protocols, this different data exchange format into NGSI, which is the language that is understood by the platform. And on top of this uh, common data, you can build any type of service, any type of application for different usages and different users. You can integrate different types of data, the data coming from CD, both from open data portals or sensors that are spread in CD. You can integrate data from users, from their mobile phones or any type of application. You can integrate information from devices in the streets, for location, even from Earth observation. And you can integrate any type of appliance that, are, that is in your smart home or um, devices in an industrial chain. All this data is pushed into the context broker once it is converted into NGSI and can be used by any type of application that would like to make use of this data and also provide added value services based on this, on this data. NGSI is um, promoted by Etsy and uh, Fiber provides the first implementation of this standard for commercial use. 
It's a common language for all data source, both IoT and non-IoT. Fiware is structured in the different uh, functional blocks that are covering from the collection, from the connectivity to the devices, to the uh, physical world, going through the uh, core context management where context broker is included, and also other blocks that are used for processing the collected data, analyzing it, visualizing it, uh, monetizing it and, and publishing in the different uh, in different sources or services. There are also any other supporting tools for security, for deployment and so on. Here in this uh, presentation we are going to be focused on two of the generic enablers from Fiverr. The first one is the context broker that is included in the core context management block and is uh, the core component that is uh, in charge of managing the context of the data. Then we have, uh, we will show you also the IoT agents, one of them, the LoRaWAN. And in the next slide, you can see the different IoT agents that are provided by Fiverr currently. They are covering protocols and uh, technologies from lightweight machine to machine, ultralight, JSON, OPC UA, and LoRaWAN, which is the one we will show you later on. You can build up your own IoT agent very easily because it's provided a library which is exposing several APIs that you can use for build your, your new IoT agent for converting a new protocol, a new data format into NGSI. The IoT agents are in charge of collecting this data, transform the data format into NGSI, and to push this data into the context broker in order to be used for any other component or any other service on top. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Roberto Castillo. I work in the area of IoT technology at Atos. Currently, I am involved in the technical management of the urban data platform of Atos. Today, I'm going to talk about the Firework LaraGuan IoT agent. I will show you how to connect LoRaWAN and Nodes to this IoT agent. To perform this, we will use the Things Network platform. First of all, I will introduce the agent. Fiber LoRaWAN IoT agent is fully compliant with LoRaWAN reference architecture, providing interoperability between Fireware and GSI context brokers and LoRaWAN devices. This IoT agent supports different LoRaWAN stacks, such as the Things Network, LoRaServer.io, and other commercial servers. On the slide, we can see the architecture used to perform the integration with the TTM platform. Different elements are involved in this architecture. We can see the nodes, gateways, hubs, as well as the TTM platform. The TTM platform is accessed by the IoT agent using the NQTT protocol. It is important to say that this IoT agent supports specific message formats, such as Cayenne LPP, Seaboard, as well as other proprietary formats. More information about the IoT agent can be found at the links below. The following screen shows a typical architecture used to perform the integration between the TTN platform and the Fiber ecosystem. On the left side of the screen, we can see one LoRaWAN and node, one gateway and the TTN platform. In this situation, the LoRaWAN and node runs an application that reads the value from an onboard temperature sensor encodes the information and forward the result to TTN using a gateway. On the right side of the screen, we can see the Fiber IoT agent and the NGSI context broker. The Fiber IoT agent enables the ingestion of data from LoRaWAN application servers in NGSI context brokers, subscribing to communication channels, decoding payloads, and translating them to NGSI data model. This IoT agent uses a MongoDB database to persist information. The NGSI Contest Broker is the entry point to the Fiber ecosystem. It manages large-scale contest information regardless of the type of data source. It uses a MongoDB database to persist information as well. The Contest Broker allows you to manage the entire life cycle of a contest information, including updates, queries, registrations, and subscriptions. It is an NGSI server implementation to manage contest information and its availability. 
Now let's continue with a brief integration demo. In this demo, we will access to an online testing platform with the latest version of the TTN server. We will use a testing sensor connected to this platform, one instance of LeraOne IoT agent and a firewall contest broker. Finally, we will see an example of how the data could be checked in the IoT platform. First of all, we go to the URL of the TTN platform and we log into it. To send data to the TTN platform, a previous configuration is required. In this previous configuration, a device that sends data to the platform is defined. For convenience, the whole configuration process has already been carried out. We will review the different parameters that will be used at a later stage to configure the device in the IoT agent. In the platform, we can see different parameters related to this configuration process. On the left part of the screen, there are different parameters and options needed to establish the LoRaWAN network. For instance, we can check the values for the application and device identifiers, which will be needed to carry out the configuration process. Other important parameters are related to the information to establish the MQTT connection to the platform, such as the host, username, and password. We need to save the values of these parameters, all of them, because we will use them later. We are going to launch the IoT agent. After that, we'll see the log messages displayed by it. It is possible to check that the whole data flow is working correctly by calling the API of the firewall contest broker. To do that, we can use a cool command. We have to write the URL of the firewall contest broker and the red values for the headers. At this stage, the response should be empty. That's it, it's empty. In order to start using the IoT agent, a new device must be provisioned. We are going to check the content of the file used to perform the provisioning action. To perform this provisioning action, we have to replace different parameters of the provisioning file with the appropriate values extracted from the platform. The execution of the provisioning file will create a simple LoRaWAN device with just one declared active attribute. This attribute is temperature. With this command, we are provisioning a device in the IoT agent. After performing the provisioning operation, we can check the information returned by the IoT agent. This information is the message used in the provisioning process without the values of the temperature attribute. It's important to say that the data extracted from the firewall contest broker is represented using NGSI data model, a standardized representation independent of the LoRaWAN communication protocol and the payload encoding format. At the top of the screen, in the IoT agent console, we can see a new data from the TTN platform. The IoT agent decodes the payload, transforms it to NGSI data model, and forwards the result to the firewall contest broker. We can check the response from the firewall contest broker again. In this case, we should receive the information sent by the platform. And that's correct. We can see that the information in the agent console and the information received from the firewall contest broker is the same. Finally, as I said before, we will see an example of how the data sent to the firewall contest broker could be checked in an IoT platform. This platform uses a firewall contest broker as an entry point. First of all, we have to access the login page of the IoT platform and log into it. After that, we can navigate to the right option and verify the values received from different sorts of sensors. Thank you, Roberto. 
very illustrative presentation. Let's close the presentation today with a summary of what we, of what we have already said. First of all, to encourage you to use Fiware as the right technology today for managed data context by using NGSI standard. Thanks to their generic enablers, Fiware is uh, supporting you in the development of your IoT data platforms. Among the generic enablers that are provided by Fiware, uh, the IoT agents are in charge of connecting IoT devices. And specifically, you can use the LoRaWAN IoT agent to connect uh, your LoRa devices to the Fiware Context Broker, which is the core component of Fiware to manage context. This agent is supporting the Things Network server. And today you have seen a demo about how to integrate the last version of the Things Network server in the agent. So it's already integrated and ready to be used. We would like to thank you for your time, for your attendance to this presentation, and do not hesitate to contact us for any further information. Thank you very much and good afternoon.